Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our webinar, Optimizing String Gauge Location Using True Load. Our webinar will be one hour long. We will have a 15-minute Q&A session at the end. So if you come across any questions during our presentation, please ask us, and we will be happy to answer those questions. I would like to get started with brief introductions to our presenters. Today, Avaya's introduction will be given by Sri Sridi Giraju. Shrika is the Director of Simulation Services at Vias. He has been at Vias for two years and has over 10 years of the SO experience, specifically with Abacus, customer service, and consultancy for a range of diverse industries. He holds a PhD in solid mechanics from Brown University. His, mail, his email is listed on the screen in case you have any questions. The main speaker today of our webinar will be Tim Hunter. He's the president and founder of Wolfstar Technologies, LLC. His work experience includes 22 years at Harley Davidson. He is also the creator of True Load Software, which brings critical understanding of loading on complex structure. He holds a PhD in engineering mechanics and is considered a world authority on structural analysis. With the intros out of the way, we will get started with a brief introduction to Vias. Srikanth, would you like to take over? Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Beatrice. Can you hear me well? Hello? Hi. Yes, I can. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, hello. Good morning, everyone. Um, or uh, good evening or good afternoon if, if you are elsewhere in outside US. Okay. Uh, let me go to the next slide. All right, I'll just uh, give a brief introduction of Vias. Uh, basically, we are a partner, platinum partner of Dassault Systems Simulia. Uh, so we handle uh, Simulia brand software like Abacus, iSight, FeSafe, Tosca, and also other uh, soft brands of uh, Dassault Systems like Kitia, Delmia, Inovia, and 3D Experience. Uh, we basically reseller and also we give them the support and training in these particular software. Uh, we have multiple industry experience uh, spanning oil and gas, machinery and equipment, petrochemical process, nuclear, aerospace, medical devices, manufacturing, automotive. So um, we have diverse experience cover from uh, with people coming from various backgrounds. So if you have any uh, particular issues that you're facing in using any of the uh, software that I mentioned above, uh, please feel free to reach out to us or any particular problems that you might have in solving some particular engineering uh, issues, we can help you out in that. Uh, we have presence in Houston, Chicago, Cincinnati, and San Francisco, and also other parts of the country. Uh, actually, the building you see on the top right is basically our office at Houston. We occupy one particular floor in that uh, building. Uh, we have a team consisting of PhD and masters, again, coming from different engineering backgrounds, solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, materials and corrosion, numerical analysis, optimization, reliability, and data analytics. So again, uh, if you have any particular uh, issues that you're facing, uh, you need help, please do reach out to us. Uh, we can help you out in these particular areas too. Uh, our main work consists of providing consultancy, uh, training, software sales, and also automation and customization. Any particular uh, needs that you may have to automate or customize uh, any particular software, we can help you out with that. So technical capability specifically, uh, again, with regard to uh, simulation is component design and validation using simulation. Uh, we can also handle any fracture scenarios that you may have, any damage uh, mechanics that you may want to uh, check in your, your particular component that you're using currently. Uh, we can actually uh, find out if the what would be the life, how long it would be able to handle the particular operating loads that you may have and so on. So we can do a critical engineering assessment of your component in service. Uh, again, it could be based on uh, standard codes like API, ASME, and also and all that. We have good knowledge of those standard codes also. We can also do a particular optimization and reliability for your design uh, based on given loading scenarios and requirements that you may have. Uh, we can also handle the structural analysis and vibration assessment. Uh, also, we can handle other multi, multi physics solutions like electromagnetic systems in this case. Uh, Dassault Systems particularly has a CST software. Uh, we have a strong team in that too. We can help you out uh, in handling the electromagnetic systems, uh, basically with design, simulation, optimization. 
uh, other multi physics simulation solutions like a fluid uh, in the fluid domain like cfd flow analysis thermal analysis we can handle that too we have again a good team in that uh, area also uh, we can also uh, perform fatigue analysis again it could be strain based or stress based um, so that's something if you of your interest please do reach out to us again composite modeling and analysis and as i mentioned earlier any particular automation requirements and also uh, digital mock up development systems engineering too so what's our value proposition as a as your software solution partner uh, we are particularly committed to your success uh, we take a great uh, pride and also put a lot of effort to meet your uh, uh, requirements and uh, give you a good uh, uh, a kind of a solution that will meet your star requirements and uh, again that's through our technical uh, excellence and innovation uh, we, we strive to achieve that uh, we also have good domain knowledge in FEA and CFD as I was mentioning earlier uh, again uh, covering multiple industry uh, scenarios uh, we can also review your existing simulation workflow and process and see that uh, if it could be if it could be improved uh, we'll provide you a good feedback on that and that will enhance your productivity also we can also provide very customized trainings and also standard trainings uh, basically in abacus software or in other softwares too uh, again it could be even uh, non-related software like you know like it's general finite element analysis um, training we could even provide that uh, it could be again in-house at your place or on site at our um, or also uh, online it could be in any of those and uh, we also provide uh, software development services for abacus specifically uh, using uh, user subroutines we could help you with that in developing a user subroutine or also python scripts for automation and customization uh, that will help you in uh, pre and post processing uh, uh, applications uh, you have a contact info. Uh, I think that's also been given earlier also, but will come later on. So you can also come to our website and get that info needed. So um, please do reach out to us if you have any requirements. Uh, we're always there to uh, help out and uh, make you make your applications uh, better or, if, or solve your engineering uh, issues if you have any. With that, I will hand over controls to Tim Hunter and he can take it from there. Uh, let me stop sharing, please. Tim, it's all, it's all to you. Please go ahead. Okay, well, thank you, Shri. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen here. So um, so thank you all for taking the time to, to learn about the TrueLoad software. And uh, we've got some special applications today uh, that'll focus on the oil and gas industry. Um, so um, hopefully that'll get, that'll draw your attention. I know Vias is strong in that, in that field. So let me get, get right into it today. Um, so TrueLoad, uh, so WolfStar Technology was founded by, by me, uh, Tim Hunter, uh, back in 2010. Uh, I founded uh, WolfStar Technologies after I left Harley Davidson after being there for 22 years. I was chief engineer there, and I've got uh, a ton of experience in product development. I understand what you all go through from dealing with changes coming from styling, marketing, last minute changes, uh, dealing with production issues and those types of things. So I've been very much involved in every aspect of product development. And I think I've got a set of tools here that can really help you get your products to market faster and better with, uh, with the answers you need. We've got great partnerships with the Soul Systems, Ansys, MSC, and CETRON is our 3D visualization environment. So we've got great partners out there who really see the value in our tool as well. So quite, you know, quite frankly, with TrueLoad, you get to use your FEA model and test data to work together so you can understand all of your product loading. So we've got, um, we've got customers in, in just about every field you can think of using our tools to back out the loads on their structures. And we're all about helping you get your loads so that you can understand the loading on your structures so you can do proper analysis on your, on your structures. Uh, we've got clients here. This is a, just a snapshot from our website. Actually, this is pretty old, but, but basically this is a snapshot of our clients from our website here. The green highlighted customers here, these are customers who are either using TrueLoad directly or we've used it for them on projects doing consulting work. So the products from Wolfstar Technologies are TrueLoad. TrueLoad is our flagship product. This is basically a product that turns components into load transducers. We will extract a correlation matrix out of the FEA model. We'll tell you where to place strain gauges. You place the strain gauges on the part, and then um, 
oh, you'll go out and do measurements. And from those strain measurements, then we will back calculate time histories of loading on your structure. So we're really just turning your parts into load transducers by leveraging the FEA model and strain gauges to work together. Another tool that we've got is this tool called TrueQSE. QSE stands for quasi-static events. And basically this is a tool that will basically scale um, result sets from your FEA model by time varying values that you, that you develop. Now, this is a really important tool for us because what's happening with TrueLoad is TrueLoad is going to calculate um, time histories of loading that are mapped back to individual result sets in your FEA model. And then TrueQSC is basically a tool that very quickly gives us the ability to reconstruct the full field events and generate operating deflection shapes and let you query anything on the part to look at response. So TrueQSC is so important for you understanding your model. We basically bundle TrueQSC with TrueLoad. So when you buy TrueLoad, you get TrueQSC automatically. And a third product we've got is True LDE, stands for Linear Dynamic Events. And this is really a post-processor for linear dynamic solutions. And we're not gonna talk about that today. Maybe at a later uh, webinar we can do that. But really, this is a really powerful tool for understanding dynamic events because most post-processors aren't really geared towards doing linear dynamic post-processing. So this is just really meant for looking at your linear dynamic results. And then all of our products, since we're so concerned about getting the loading right, we have got interfaces to the major FEA-based fatigue softwares out there. So if, you, if you're using our tools to understand your loading, we can export that data to your FEA-based fatigue softwares so you can very quickly and easily do fatigue analysis. And so this is great. It builds fatigue analysis into a natural part of your, your uh, design and development cycle. But really, you don't need to have fatigue analysis software to use our tools. We give you great understanding of your product. But if you've got fatigue analysis software, we help you use it easier and better. So the whole, the whole motivation behind true load is quite simply, what's the load? So if you're a design engineer that's got to develop product for this motorcycle, you're, you're responsible for the function and for the durability. But the loading on this motorcycle is crazy nonlinear. You can't measure the loads, you can't simulate the loads, but you as the design engineer are responsible for delivering product that functions and is durable. Well, what do you do? Well, we basically recognize that the individual components are responding linearly. So we will play, place strain gauges on the swing arm, the frame, the crankcase, the handlebars, the fenders, the gas tank, the luggage systems. We'll put strain gauges in all of these subsystems and basically use those subsystems be, to become the load transducers to understand the loading going into each of these subsystems. And then you can use those loads to do design and development. So we're really just about understanding these highly nonlinear loads using the mathematics of linear analysis. And this is a first to market solution it's based on a technology called influence coefficients. And influence coefficients have been around for probably 50 years. But the problems with influence coefficients historically, it's all been done manually. So gauge placement has been done manually. The unit loads have been man done manually in the lab. And so the correlation matrices were never done very well. And then you get the results that were meaningless. And so it never really caught on because of all the problems with all the manual steps involved. And what we have done, we have optimized the, the whole process using scripting and your FEA model to get you the optimal strain gauge placement and to get you the best correlation matrix we can get. Okay, we're all about making your parts load transducers. So, you know, just a little bit of history and historical concerns with doing analysis. You know, when you do an analysis, you can have a perfect CAD model, you can have a perfect mesh, you can have a perfect material model, a great solver. But oftentimes when you go to throw it in for solution, you often guess at what the load case is. You know, it might be a departmental standard, it might be a calculation you did on the back of a napkin, but at the end of the day, you really don't know what the actual loading is. And so if you're just guessing at the analysis, guessing at the loads, you're basically guessing at the analysis results. At that point, you might as well just get, get a crayon and color the pictures yourself, right? So in the US, we've got this term called GIGO, right? Garbage in, garbage out. So what people try to do to get around this problem is use load transducers like you see here. And these load transducers are fine. They are perfectly good devices. But the problems are that the load transducers themselves are expensive. And then every time you want to use one, now you've got to go in and change your part. You've got to cut out material. You insert the load transducer. Now you've just changed the mass. You've changed the stiffness. You're measuring something. It may or may not be the actual loads. And now you take that back to your 
to your analysis guy. And the analysis guy is typically working the as designed part. And now the analysis guy has got to rework his FEA model to look like the test part in order to use the, the loads that you just measured. So this isn't perfect, but this is traditionally what people have to do to get loading. Another approach people try to use are strain gauges. So typically what will happen is the analyst will look at their FEA model, come up with some strain gauge locations, he'll talk with his colleague, come up with some more locations, he might have 30 strain gauge locations, you put those on the structure, you go to the proving ground, you collect the strain data, and come back, and you look at the strain signals coming from the proving ground, you look at the, part, the FEA model of the part, and just scratch your heads. Nothing's making sense. The loading in the field is so complex, the loading in the FEA model is relatively simple. So typically what happens is an analyst will just um, basically throw out all the channels of data except for one or two, and maybe concentrate just one or two points in time on these two channels and work for days if not weeks to get a load case that just lights up qualitatively the same way. Not, we're not even talking about quantity, we're talking qualitatively. And they'll use that qualitative analysis then for redesign. And now the next time you go through the design process and develop your next level of prototype and get to the field, you find you've got the same problem or maybe even new problems and you repeat the cycle all over again. This is just a very typical process with FEA modeling. Okay, this is, a, this is a, just what people have got to do with FEA modeling before true load. So what's wrong? I mean, your companies are investing in great analysts, great, great FEA software, you're doing the right stuff by testing and even investing in tools for doing fatigue analysis. So you're investing in all of the right, the right tools, but you're not getting the right answers. What's going on? Well, the problem is you just got too many variables. You got the gauge locations, you got the load cases and the quantity of data. So if you put strain gauges on a structure, let's say you had 30 strain gauges and you went to the proving group ground, you came back with a time history of data. That time history of data might be a half million data points long. And the problem is that every point in time is going to have a unique loading recipe to, to generate the strains on those 30 strain gauges. So if you get a half million data points, now you get a half million recipes and you can't do that manually. So you're just left with this really hard problem. Okay. It's a hard problem. It's basically what it is. So the solution here is true load. True load's doing what's called in situ load measurement. So basically it's gonna turn components into multi-channel load cells by leveraging the FEA model and the test data to work together. We, we can work with any FEA out there. We got nice plugins for ANSYS Workbench and Abacus CAE, but at the end of the day, we're gonna get optimal placement of strain gauges and we're gonna get strain correlated load histories and now that we've got the strain correlated load histories, if you're doing FEA-based fatigue, you can use that to drive your fatigue analysis. So this is really the solution for you here. So um, we've got customers in all these product segments. So if, you're, if, you're, if your software, if your structures are getting loading from the wind, sea, or air, if you're getting loading from the customers, if you're even getting internal loading, we can help you back calculate the loads in your structures so you can do proper design and analysis. Okay. So many of you might be familiar with this V diagram in product development. This is pretty common in the automotive industry. And really the way this V diagram works is you start on the left hand side here with the voice of the customer, you develop product requirements and functional specs, and then you start coming in to doing, doing system design, subsystem design, and component design. So this is basically you're working in CAD and FEA to do your initial design. And then when you want to start verifying that you've got things right, you'll come up on the physical side of things and start doing component tests, subsystem tests, system tests, all the way up to the final acceptance and launch of the product. So this is pretty much a, product, a standard product development V diagram here. And where TrueLoad fits in, TrueLoad's all about taking the information that you're gaining from the physical test and bringing it back into the virtual world to push your virtual design in FEA so you can do a better job on your virtual design analysis and go through this iteration process fewer and fewer times. This, so this is the really key thing with TrueLoad. We're leveraging the information you're learning in, in physical tests, bringing it back in the virtual world so you can drive your models and actually do product, proper product development. The workflow for TrueLoad works like this. We start off with an FEA model like normal, but rather than you um, coming in with a complex load on the structure, I'm gonna have you decompose the loads into a series of unit load cases. So maybe one kilonewton in the X, 
one kilonewton in the Y, one kilonewton in the Z. It could be a pressure load, it could be a thermal load, it could be inertial load. Basically, you need to think about these unit loads, and if you could mix them together, could you approximate the operating conditions on the structure? So this is you coming up with just unit load cases. You solve the FEA model for your unit load cases. The pretest software now looks at all those strain responses for all those unit load cases and comes up with the optimal strain gauge placements. And then there's tools in here that lets you reposition and reorient the gauges. And then at the end of the day, when you're happy with your gauge placements that you've made nice for the test guys, now we're going to store off a correlation matrix that relates the strain response at all the gauges to each of the unit load cases. So we take that correlation matrix, we store that to desk, we take your gauge placement information, we bring that into the physical world, and we have the lab then place the strain gauges on the physical part. And now we're just going to collect strain data. So we can take, collect strain data in the lab, you can collect it in, in, the, in the field, you could collect it on your proving grounds or in your customer's hands. So we're just collecting time histories of strain data. And now that we've got these time histories of strain data, we're gonna bring that into post-test. And now post-test is gonna take the, the, the measured strains, multiply it by the correlation matrix from pre-test to, de to develop up for us time histories of loading functions. And now these are just loads in the structure. You could bring into your FEA model using normal means, or what I highly recommend is use the true QSE tool, which is gonna manage all of your unit load cases and all of the corresponding loading functions automatically, and it will allow you to very quickly reconstruct the full field stress and strain on the part. You can plot X, Y plots anywhere in the structure, generate operating deflection shapes. So true QSE becomes a very efficient way to, to look at your full field results. And then now that you've got these strain correlated loading functions, now you can drive those into your fatigue analysis packages because the hardest thing about doing fatigue analysis is getting the duty cycle right. So true loads are all about getting the, the, the loading proper on your structure. And now that you've got loads proper, you can do proper fatigue analysis. So this flow chart looks kind of complex. I understand. But really, the first four blocks are you turning your part into a load transducer. And the bottom flow chart is are you doing design and optimization once you've got the loads. So you might do the first four blocks once and then go through the design and optimization loops 20, 30 times now that you've got the proper loading on your structure. This is typically what my customers do. Okay, this is all based on linear systems and loads, okay? So linear system is where loads are proportional displacements, displacements are proportional strains, strains are proportional loads, it's a linear system. Now I fully understand everything in life is nonlinear, but we're turning your part into a load transducer. So we're gonna target nominal areas on your part to lay strain gauges. We're gonna stay away from welds, we're gonna stay away from bolted joints, we're gonna stay away from areas of contact. We're gonna be nice nominal areas where the strain response remains linear and proportional to the loading. The loading can be as nonlinear as anything. The loading could be sinusoidal, it could be ramp loading, it could be impact loading. That's okay, I just need the strain response to remain proportional to the, to the applied loading. So we can take this little diagram here and turn it into a couple of equations. So the right-hand side, well, this is F is equal to KX. So that's Hooke's law. So if your structure is obeying Hooke's law, then the left-hand side of the triangle has got to be satisfied as well too, which is strain times the correlation matrix is equal to load. And we're gonna use this equation then to generate loads on the structure as being strains from test times the correlation matrix from FEA. So this is the, this is the equation that TrueLoad's using to do the load calculations. And I said earlier, this is based on influence coefficients. This is the governing equation that you'll find in papers on influence coefficients. And another interesting thing you can see here is that this, this equation relating strain to force is really the strain corollary for Hooke's law. So basically your, your FEA model has got to basically cap capture the overall stiffness and the nominal strains on the, F on the part correctly. So this is a, just a moderate bar to set on your FEA model, okay? So the, this, is, this says it, you know, we've got the tools already to understand the loading. So let's take a little closer look here. So I've got a couple of slides of math here, but this really helps you understand what's going on. So the, here we've got strain 
times a correlation matrix is equal to load. So on the right hand side, in, in this example, we've got three unit loads in our structure. And on the left hand side, you can see I've got four strain gauges. The columns of the strain matrix represents uniaxial strain gauges laid on our structure. So let me walk through this row by row and you can see what's going on. So here if I turn load case number one on, and load cases two and three off, I can look at the strain response of my four gauges and write that down. So I'm gonna write down the strain response of my four gauges due to load case one. Let's move on to load case number two. So here we turn load case number two on, load cases one and three off, and now we look at these same four strain gauges and write down the strain response. The strain response on these gauges are gonna be different for load case two because load case two is different than load case one. We're essentially getting a strain signature for each load case. So now we're looted again for load case number three. So we turn load case number three on, turn off load cases one and two, and now I've got another unique strain signature for load case number three. So here I've got three unique strain signatures and three unique load cases. I've got a well-behaved linear set of equations. I can solve this. Now these load cases on the right-hand side, they can be anything. They could be point loads, they could be pressure loads, they could be moments, they could be unit displacements, they could be thermal loads, they could even be mode shapes. So true load can go, can go and recover the, the full field response based on the strain gauges fa uh, found from this, these mathematics here. Okay, um, so now we've got this nice equation for, for load, and the only thing I haven't talked about is C. So if you think of this load matrix, if I call turning a load on a one, turning a load off a zero, then the load matrix becomes uh, an identity matrix, and then I can do a pseudo inverse. So I take strain times C is equal to I, pre-multiply by strain transpose, pre-multiply by strain transpose, strain inverse, then you get C is equal to strain transpose, strain inverse, strain transpose, and that's what we pull the FEA model. So this is the correlation matrix we're using for, for true load now, for, to, get our lo to get our loads from the strain gauges. Now we've, got, now we've got a million places to lay strain gauges on our structure. So how do we know where the best places to lay strain gauges are? So if we take a look at this equation here, we've got an inverse in here. And inverses can be very poorly behaved and that's not what we want. We want the best behaved inverse. So we've got an algorithm that basically recognizes that the inverse of a matrix is defined by the adjunct of the matrix divided by the co but divided by the determinant of the matrix. So, so basically, uh, we, we want the thing in the bottom, the determinant. We don't want the determinant to be zero. We want that to be maximum. So this is our objective function. We're maximizing the determinant of strain transpose strain. And we're doing that hunt with this technique called the galil kiefer deoptimal search algorithm. And we've borrowed that from design of experiments. This is a very efficient way to find the best strain gauges. Okay, so that's basically the mathematics. So that's, that's what's going on behind the scenes. I've got a little example here. This is actually what I use for training. Uh, this is a headlamp on a motorcycle. And this headlamp here, um, the analyst looks at this headlamp and says, well, this headlamp is getting excitation from the, from the front suspension, from the handlebars, from the engine and frame vibration. He's saying this headlamp is basically a base excitation problem. So he's, he says, you know what, I'm gonna simulate a base excitation as being restrained at ground of the bolt holes, and then he's gonna put 10 Gs, uh, 10 Gs of acceleration in the X, Y, and Z directions. So these are his three unit load cases, and he's just gonna go in and then load up the pretest software. The pretest software loads up his three unit load cases, and then he's just gotta go in and select a subset of the model for strain gauge, for strain gauge placement. So he's picking elements in very judiciously here. He's picking elements in the middle of the headlamp bucket and in the middle of the legs. He's staying away from boundary conditions and staying away from rigid body elements here where he's gonna have high strain gradients. We wanna be in low strain gradient areas in nice nominal locations on the structure, okay? So he, so he picks these locations here, tells Trulot he wants six strain, strain gauges. Trulot draws up the strain gauges up form on the structure Showing, showing the position and orientation with these lines. So the line is, re, is representing the orientation of the strain gauge. And once he's happy with that gauge placement then, he goes to the lab and gets the strain measured on the physical part. And now the whole idea is to take this measured strain data and turn this into calculated loads. And he's gonna do that with 
the post-test software. Now the post-test software is going to bring in the, the data file from pre-test with a correlation matrix in it. It's going to bring the strain data from test and it's going to push this button here to generate the loads. And it's really that simple. There are tools in here to map and drop gauges, to plot data, all sorts of things we can do. But really at the end of the day, you're just bringing in the correlation matrix from pre-test, strain data from test, and pushing the button to generate the loads. And now what's gonna happen here when we push this button, it's gonna take the measured strain data, multiply it by the correlation matrix to generate loading functions. And now that it's got loading functions, it's gonna generate an HTML post-test report for us, and it's gonna go generate strains at the strain gauges based on the loadings it's just calculated and compare them against the measured strains. So we're gonna get a bunch of uh, plot data that's gonna show measured strains versus simulated strains, and that'll give us confidence of whether or not the loads that we've just calculated are correct. And it, once we've got that confidence then, the post-test software then is also going to automatically generate for us a true QSC file and the true QSC file is gonna have the unit loads from the FEA model and the corresponding loading functions that came from the test data. And now we can take this, we can take this file now and we can probe any node error element we want for any stress or strain response we want. We can generate operating inflection shapes or we can even go off and do fatigue analysis. So at this point now, we've got a fully defined time history of loading on the structure and we can go in and query anything going on. Now this is great to see what, what was going on in our test part, but the whole idea with true load is for doing redesign. Now that we've got these loads, we can go in and do redesign. And now to, in order to do redesign, it's very simple. You just go back into your FEA model and you can change the model any way you want. You can poke holes in it, you can change connections, you can thicken things up, you can do whatever you want and remesh the part. And the only requirement I'm gonna put on you is you just need to solve the FEA model with the same three unit loads that you started with at the beginning. So now the FEA solves are extremely simple. And you just come back into post into QSC now and just have QSC point to the new FEA database. And then that will literally superimpose everything together by our loading functions. So it becomes a very quick and easy way to go through design and development and understand the structural response on your, part, uh, on your structure with some very relatively simple FEA solves. So we've got a number of examples here um, that I wanna go through. This is an example from Honda. Honda had these, uh, these oil uh, passages on, on their engines here, and they had some cracking issues on one of the flanges here. And, and so the loading is so complex, they couldn't do this using normal means. So they, they used true load here, and they applied strain gauges on the, on the oil passageway here in the engine and ran the engine through their normal duty cycle. And basically, they were able to get strain correlation. So here's one of their strain correlation plots here showing measured strain versus simulated strains from the loads from true load. Now that they've got this level of strain correlation, they were able to go back in then and do design and optimization and change the structure so they could get the fatigue um, uh, durability that needed out of this part. So this, this was able to give them an answer in relatively quick fashion um, that they wouldn't have had any other tools to get to on their own. Here's another example from a customer. Um, this customer here, uh, Aaron's, um, they make these, uh, these zero turning radius lawnmowers and they basically this engine deck from, from them which sits underneath the seat here and the engine and transmission sits on this. This engine deck was working fine but the transmission supplier was wanting to have more airflow getting to the transmission. So they came and talked to us to see if we could help them do a redesign on this. And in working with them, we decided to treat this as a base excitation problem. So we had a lump mass of the engine and transmission assembly bolted onto the engine deck. And then we just had 10 Gs, X, Y, and Z on the structure here. So here's our unit loads on the structure. And basically the structure is going across a proving grounds and the engine and transmission are bouncing around on the engine deck. So this is why we kind of came up with this loading on the structure for our unit loads. And so basically true load then to come in and lay eight strain gauges here as you can see on the structure. So we have these eight strain gauges laid and then this next slide is gonna show us our test results. So on the top left here, you see a plot of all eight strain gauges as they're going across their proving grounds. Now these eight strain gauges were used when it was multiplied by the correlation matrix to generate loading functions. 
And now that we've got the loading functions, the, so the process software automatically goes into the FEA model, pulls out simulated strains at the gauges. So there's blue curves here that you can't see because they're line on line. There are the simulated strains, and down below we've got a cross plot of measured strain versus simulated strain. This was a single button push on my part to generate this load. This, so this is, this is what happens. Once you've got the strain data in, you can get the loads. And once you've got the loads in, you can generate operating deflection shapes. Now, this company had design guides for developing these engine decks. And they, they actually had one of their engineers do their first, first iteration on this. And they were actually really proud of this design that they came up with. And they had it down on their shaker test when I was up there talking to them about doing this job. And so we, they said, let's go down to the shaker test and, and see this thing on the shaker test and we can show you what's going on. And so we got down to the lab and this, the, the, the part they were gonna look at, this, this engine deck, it was on shaker test, but it had failed just about an hour before we got there. It failed in 1,200 cycles, and it's supposed to go 10,000. I said, perfect. <laughs> Give me that FEA model, and let's see what's going on. You can see now the stress and strains are a lot higher. The next slide, I'm going to show you durability plots here. And then working with the engineers, we came up with a different design. We came up with a different hole pattern. And this, this initial one was, uh, was the... Uh, uh, was the, um, and the was basically two layers of sheet metal uh, riveted together with large holes on it, and and this was working great. But the the manufacturing folks really did not like having two two layers of sheet metal well uh, riveted together, so we basically went through and came up with just a single single layer of sheet metal, and we iterated on on thickness. So basically, uh, this was our design iteration here, and now. Here's their durability plots. And so basically this is their, their fatigue life of their material. And so basically they need to go 10,000 cycles here on, on their, or actually 10,000 hours, I believe it was, uh, on here. And so basically the goal is the yellow curve on here. So, so basically on these plots, we wanna see anything yellow, green, or blue. So their baseline was fine. There's some red here because of the RBEs we had on the structure. But, but now um, if we came, came and take a look at the, the the fatigue analysis, and we used FE Safe for this, and the loads from True Load. So FE Safe was saying that this should fail in 1,000 cycles, and then the lab it failed in 12,000. So we basically had a perfect correlation here. So this was just yet another confirmation that we had the loading right, and then we used that loading then to go in and do the fatigue analysis on our design iterations here. And you can see then by the end of the week, we had basically a design that met the fatigue analysis, the fatigue needs they needed, the durability needs, and the airflow they needed. So this kind of just shows what you can do once you understand the loading. So um, just in talking to the engineers at this company, they said if they had done this project without true load, basically it cost them $30,000 every time they prototype and test something. It takes about six weeks to procure these things. So if we did five design iterations, well, that's, $150,000 in 30 weeks. And with TrueLoad, we did this whole thing in eight days. And if you amortize the cost of TrueLoad, it's under $1,000. So this is the order of magnitude savings that, that my customers see when they're doing, when they're doing things with TrueLoad. And I, I get stories like this from all of my customers. A um, couple more examples here. This is a bulldozer application. So this, this, um, this application, um, this company, when they had launched this bulldozer, um, they had already launched this bulldozer. And I came and talked to them after they launched the bulldozer. But basically, they were telling me that the analysis team couldn't get anything to match in the lab. The lab couldn't get anything to match in the field. And basically, each department didn't, didn't think the other department knew what they were doing. And so I kind of came in. They said, they, said, they said, great, let's see if you can help us out with this. And basically, came in working with, with the teams. We set up XYZ loads in the front of the blade here. We had a load on this hydraulic cylinder, which was being actuated, and then there was a mechanism in the back. So we had five unit loads. We laid 12 strain gauges on, on the structure, so basically on the arms and on the back of the blade. And you can see on the top right here, these are the, the green curves are the measured loads from our, from our testing. And then the, once we had those loads, we multiplied them by the correlation matrix to generate, uh, once we had those strain gauges, we multiplied them by the correlation matrix to get the loads. And once we had the loads then, we can go back to the FEA model and pull out the simulated strains and plot those in blue. So these guys were really happy 
they thought this was a great correlation. This is a correlation they could have never ever hoped of, uh, hoped on, on their own. But they said what their real problems were were these forgings here and the welds going around these forgings here. This is where they had the real problems in development. So they laid some extra gauges of interest here. It's so like this gauge number 19. This is an extra gauge of interest. And I've got that get gauge plotted up in green here. And then using the true QSC software, we probed the FEA model coming away from the weld and plotted up the strains coming away from the weld to show the strain response to the FEA model. And, and this is the type of correlation we're getting now from these loads that we calculated. So this, this gauge wasn't used for the load measurement, but, but once you get the overall flexibility of the structure right, the hot spots come along for the ride. So this is just what happens with true load. And we've got a number of papers on our website that show similar applications. And now we're gonna get into some, um, some oil and gas um, mm -hmm. type applications here. This first one was an example that I worked on with VIA several years ago on a blow off preventer. So this is just an example problem. So we have this little model of a blow off preventer here. And so basically in this, on this example, we just had two unit loads. We had a compression load and a pressure load on this, on this, uh, on this structure. And the true load software said, place your strain gauges in these locations here. So there's four strain gauges being placed. And then, um, and then once we got those strain gauge placements, then um, we can then uh, take a look at the, the uh, condition number on the matrices and things, and these are just normal plots. And then what we did is we set up a simulated event. So this is, this is kind of a textbook event here. So we set up a simulated event on the structure that generated simulated strains on our gauges. And then we took those simulated strains then, and then we actually put some signal noise on them. So we just put some random noise on top of these strains just to see um, if we have noise in our data, what, what that would do to the answers. And then what you can see here, uh, the, this is some of the results. So on the top left is my green, my green plot of my measured strain data. And then there's the blue simulated strains and they're pretty much line on line and here's the cross plot of it all. And then on the right, you can see the, the, the loading functions. And we'll take a closer look at those loading functions. So you can see the green curves are the original loading functions we put on our simulated structure. And the blue is, a, is the recovered loads using the true load software. So there's a little bit of error, but, but um, even though there's a little bit of error there, we're getting exact correlation on the strains. So this is, this is showing that we've, we've got a nice set of loading to understand what's going on in the structure. And we'll do a similar exercise on this flange. So this is another uh, flange here. So in this case, we've got three unit loads. So I've got a, you know, I've got a blind load, a, a moment, and a, and, a, and a pressure load on here. And, and basically the true load software is identifying these six strain gauges here on the structure. And then similarly, this is just the, uh, mathematics showing how the, the math of the problem is working out. And again, we generated some simulate, we generated some simulated loads on the structure, which generated simulated strains. We put some, some noise on those simulated strains, some random noise on those strains. And then again, we've got the, the measured strains versus simulated strain plots showing that we're getting nearly perfect correlation. And, we're, and this is our loading functions now. And now you can see our original import loads versus the calculated loads from true load, and just showing how well we're able to recover their original loading with the software. Okay, so this is just the last example. Um, we're coming up, uh, we've got a live project going on now, and I don't have any data to show you on this, but basically this is a typical offshore oil platform, and um, our customer here is wanting to understand the loads in the tendons that are holding the oil platform to the ground. And traditionally, the way this is done is people use traditional load, load measuring technology out here in the water at the ends of the tendons. And the problem is, is that traditional load transducers uh, will fail over time because it's exposed to salt water and loads out in the environment. And so these things will fail over time. And so what we're going to do is we're going to be placing gauges on the insides of these legs here in order to uh, basically turn the whole platform into its own load transducer so we can understand the tendon loads. So basically, this is going to be an embedded technology of true load. So we'll basically go through the true load pretest software, extract a correlation matrix, 
and burn that to a computer chip. We'll instrument the live part and do strain data collection uh, during operation. And then basically the mathematics to get the loads is actually pretty simple. It's just, we're, it's just a matrix multiply. We're gonna measure strain, some a cor correlation matrix to generate the loads. And then once we've got these loads in, we can back calculate the, the theoretical strains at the gauges and generate correlation plots. And if we decide to look at some auxiliary high strain areas, we can uh, extract an auxiliary correlation matrix to generate the auxiliary strains at these hot spots and use that for looking at fatigue analysis. And so the way it's gonna look for the operators is that there's, we're gonna have a little force monitoring, we'll show them system de degradation plots in case there's anything going on with the system. We'll do real-time damage monitoring. And the designers of this system can actually get uh, real live duty cycles that they can use for design for durability. So this is, good, this is a really fantastic project. We're in the middle of it right now, but this is the type of thing that you can do with TrueLoad in very complex situations, you know, even a, a full-blown oil platform. So with that, I uh, just wanna kinda end that we've got tons of new capabilities already, always coming out. This, uh, we've had a big release of software in the last year where we've got um, uh, function tracking on animations, we've got hotspot uh, analysis, We've got design of experiments and 3D gauge placement uh, using uh, STL files. So we can really help you out to understand anything that you need to do um, on your structures. So we'd be really happy to talk to any of you and go and do a deep dive on your application to help you understand um, if uh, TrueLoad is a good fit for you, okay? So with that, um, that concludes my presentation here. And so we just, uh, we've got about uh, 10 minutes left here for questions. So if there are any questions, um, we, uh, we'd like to take them at this time. All right, um, so it looks like we've got uh, uh, a couple of questions here. Um, there's a question here about contact. So uh, can TrueLoad work with contact? Um, so TrueLoad by its nature is a linear, is a linear technology, so it's using um, you know, uh, linear, linear mathematics. But contact is actually held, handled very, very well with true load. Because in a contact condition problem, what we'll do is we'll place a unit load at the point of contact where we think we're gonna get contact on the structure. And when there is no contact, that contact load will be zero. And when there is contact, that contact load will be non-zero. So we've got very nice ways to handle contact loading and you get very insightful um, understanding of what's going on. Um, another question is asking about, um, do, do you need to use rosette gauges? So um, TrueLoad by its nature wants to only work with uniaxial strain gauges. Many times our customers have got rosette strain data and they wanna use, use that rosette strain data and we can do that. What we'll do is we'll basically go into TrueLoad and we'll triple stack gauges on top of each other to basically form a rosette gauge manually. But by default, TrueLoad is only working with uniaxial strain gauges. And uniaxial strain gauges are very inexpensive. They only cost 10 bucks a piece. So, um, so actually by default, we're working with the cheapest, easiest uh, gauges to get. Um, Let's see, uh, I've got one more question here, it looks like, and it says, is there a maximum number of loads or gauges? So um, the TrueLoad software is designed um, to, to work with any number of loads and any number of gauges. Um, a, a requirement is, is you need to have at least one strain gauge per load, because you can't get something for nothing. And typically, uh, we'll, um, I tell my customers that you need to have 1.5 gauges to two gauges per, per load case, because you want to have redundancy in case you lose a gauge in an actual application. Uh, and actually, we just had another similar question came in, came in. It says, how many strain gauges do we need if the number of loads is N? So if your number of loads is N, my high recommendation is 2N, but the mathematics only did dictate N. You want to have especially the first time you're doing a problem, you wanna have two N because um, 
because oftentimes when you go to work on a problem, um, a couple of things will happen. Number one is in real life, these are strain gauges, you can lose a gauge. And if you, if you only had N gauges for N loads, if you lost one gauge, you can't solve your problem. The other thing is, is that oftentimes when we're going into a problem, we'll idealize the unit loads that we put on the structure. And sometimes we idealize away some, away some of the loads that we needed to put on it. And we'll come back in, we'll look at correlation plots. We won't get good correlation plots. And if we had extra gauges, we can come in after the fact, add additional loads, and then look at the, straight, at the correlation plots, and we can see that, oh, geez, you know what? We should have included a moment, or we didn't have a moment before, and those types of things. So my high recommendation is two, load, two gauges for every load, okay? That's kind of my, my rule. And if you're, getting, if you're having lots and lots of loads, we might drop down to 1.5 gauges per load, but, but really, uh, I just want an analyst to think about it. every load on their structure is going to cost them two strain gauges. Okay. Um, and then one more question just came in. How do you select the, the basic load cases? So, so this is, this is basically your understanding of your product. So this is, this is actually one of the hardest parts of the whole, the whole technique is you've got to look at your structure and take a look at your structure and say, how does load come in? Um, is load coming in through a, a clevis joint, through a cable? Am I getting pressure loads? Am I having, in, am I having thermal loading? So you've got to think about how do, how do loads come in? And you set up unit load cases for those. But these are just unit load cases. So your unit load cases will be one kilonewton X, Y, and Z. It could be, you know, a kilonewton meter. Okay. And another question came in too. Uh, we had, what if you have modal analysis? So modal, so if you have modal analysis, just solve for the modes and we can, we can lay strain gauges based on the mode shapes. And so we'll basically uh, be directly calculating the modal participation factors uh, on the gauge, uh, on the structure, just from the strain measurements. So you, if you've got a structure with 10 modes, you solve it for your 10 modes, you lay 20 strain gauges on the structure to recover the modal participation factors. Okay. Uh, all right. I think that's all of our questions. If you've got any more questions, please reach out to the team at Vias. They're, they're experts in this stuff. If they can't answer the questions, they can always get a hold of me. I'm more than happy to help them out. Vias is one of our great partners in, in reselling the TrueLoad software. So really, they're, they're, they're your go-to people here, and they've got a direct line to me. If, if uh, you need to if you need to come to the developer and creator of the TrueLoad software, uh, Vias is your channel to get there, and we're, we're more than happy to, to work with them on that. So thank you very much. Uh, with that, I'm out. Uh, Beatrice, want to turn it back over to you in case there's anything else you want in closing off here? Uh, sure. No, I'd just like to thank everybody for attending. And like Tim said, if you have any questions, please reach out to Vias. Thank you. Thank you.